The Healing Lives Center is a center for sex, trauma, and marriage education and transformation and has the critical mission to strengthen that which God created and values, marriages and the nuclear family. Dr. Gilbert, your host, aims to provide important teaching on tough topics, great interviews and conversations, and tools just for you, all emphasizing a biblical worldview. Join us now with today's feature. Welcome to the Healing Lives with Corey Gilbert podcast. My name is Dr. Corey Gilbert, and today I have an amazing conversation with my daughter, Miley, again. So I'm so excited to have her on, and um, this is going to be a tough one, though. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming on. I am happy to. I like doing these. I love it. And she came to me with a really tough topic. And so this is me, a dad, who's also a counselor and a teacher and all sorts of other stuff, but talking to my daughter, and I want you to kind of pay like we'll pay attention watch kind of see what we do um all we have done prior to this conversation is we looked up a few bible verses that's all we've done and so i want you to kind of see our conversation about abortion how do you talk about abortion um this is going to be again a, a very difficult subject but it's a very important one to have um and so where did you get this from um a magazine okay, that so you, you got me yes yeah, so it's a magazine for girls um about Christian things, yeah. basically. And so she got this in the mail. This is something we've done over the past few years from another one that she doesn't get anymore that would lead to these conversations like this. So this one brought up that subject of abortion. Yep. What, like, what did it bring up for you? Um, it was about a girl who, um, she was not an orphan, but she was in an orphanage because I guess her parents didn't want her. Mm -hmm. but they didn't have an abortion and when she and she had an amazing life as an adopted daughter she had an adopted brother and when she grew up um her in her school like everybody it, abortion was a really big topic yeah. and she wanted to make a pro-life club and when she tried to do that she got so much hate and then she decided to try and like change laws or something and she she wanted to be like um a ballerina or something mm -hmm. she did ballet um but eh. she um, actually went into poli politics mm -hmm. to try and help with nice. the, um, abortion. She made a big group, not just for the school. Um, and yeah. Oh, so that, it sounds like that story really impacted you. But we've talked about the subject like at other times. You've heard it, heard it brought up. So what is abortion? Um. Killing a baby before it is born so that you do not have to have a child. Okay. So the first part of that, yeah. So killing a baby before it's born. That There's a problem with that? It's killing. It's killing. So you you definitely kind of go to that word. This is a living being inside of you. So it's killing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so let's look at the verses that we looked up. Psalm 139, 13, for you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. We are made before we are even born. <laughs> yes, we kind of have done, Still for some works. reason, have, have created this date where we are born into the world. When we come out of the mother's womb into the breathing air, that's the magic moment of life. This is a weird thought, but in a book series I really like, mm -hmm. Keeper of the Lost Cities, mm -hmm. um, this is going to sound weird, but they find out they're elf. Uh, the main character finds out she's an elf, but um, <laughs> later on she, in that, she founds out, finds out that the elves, instead of going by the birth date, they go by the conception date, mm -hmm. which I just thought of was really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's something about the way we talk about the subject where we've done a good job of, like talking down to a baby that's inside the womb, even though with sonograms, we can actually look and see this living being. I mean, I have a picture actually of Alex, our oldest, um, from when he was in Kelly. Uh, and it was a 3D sonogram and it shows this beautiful baby boy. And it was really cool to see. Um, and definitely those of who've ever had a baby inside at, after a certain amount of months you start feeling this baby kicking and there's so many so much evidence of life it's interesting that we're so messed up and and talking about and, and focused on talking about abortion do you do you know why um because people think we should have a right it's our body it's our choice people say okay. but it's mm -hmm. not your body it's the baby's body i know it's really interesting the wording of that is the the choice was made when you had sex 
and the choice sometimes just gets made for you when there's actually a rape or something bad happens. But then the baby's a blessing. No. You Do we see babies as a blessing? And I think that's more indicative of where we're at in our culture is we're not actually seeing babies as a blessing. People are not having children like we used to. And different cultures are seeing the problem of that, of the not um, having children like we used to. Our, our whole world's being impacted with the lack of children being born. Why? Because we see babies as a nuisance and as a as a choice of I'll have one when I'm ready or when I want to. But then why why are we so obsessed with abortion? I come back to that same question. You, you mentioned that my body, my choice. People just want want the right to do what they want. Yeah, it really comes back to our freedom, selfishness, our selfishness. Yeah. Yuck! And we're all bent that way, aren't we? I want to not have to do that when I'm told to. I want to go do that whenever I want to. I want to not have to have that responsibility if I don't want to. If you're gonna, if you don't want to have a baby, at least, at least, don't don't abort them. Give them to an orphanage. Then you might get adopted and have an amazing life. Because mm-hmm. you're looking back at that story, and it's true. There's a lot of people. Now, some of the arguments against that is there are a lot of kids that are born that don't have the care they need. So a single parent really struggles. And and I think that's because we as families and as a church should be stepping up and helping um, support and, and be a, the body of Christ around those families to help because that child didn't just accidentally slip through and show up on, on earth. Um, God actually has a perfect plan for that child too. I've heard that a lot of moms um, or t- soon to be moms, um, once they see the sonograms, mm-hmm. yeah. um, decide that they want to keep the baby. So yeah. at least try and get a sonogram first. Mm-hmm. So go to a, um, a place like Hope Pregnancy, Crisis Pregnancy Center that we have here and those kind of places. Um, most have access to sonograms now. We used to not have that. That has changed things. But I think our culture has impacted it to the negative where, again, we talk about abortion as a right. Um, you wrote down some things here. Um, um, what are the abortion laws in the U.S.? Um, yeah, go, ahead, go ahead and read that. Yeah. From 1973 to 2022, Supreme Court rulings in Roe v. Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade, 1973, and Planned Parenthood versus Casey, 1992, respectively created and maintained federal protections for pregnant women's right to get an abortion, ensuring that states would not ban abortion prior to the point in which a fetus may be deemed viable. Deemed viable. This is the wording of that's just so scary to me. Which is also why the conception date in Cape mm-hmm. Las Cities is kind of a cool point. I'm yeah. just thinking about yeah. that now. But, and that's the thing is if you actually look at the research on when life begins, most really do kind of argue in terms of scientists and st- that life begins at conception. But what we've done is we've just basically made that as an irrelevant part of the conversation. Like, so it's still my body, my choice. My we're, we're in this really interesting cultural push. But here's what's scary to me is um you go to Second Chronicles, so go back to the Old Testament, and we were kind of talking about this verse right before because it's kind of confusing, but it applies. So Second Chronicles twenty-eight, um, verse three, he offered sacrifices in the valley of the son of Hinnom, even sacrificing his own sons in the fire. He imitated the detestable practices of the pagan nations whom the Lord had driven from the land ahead of the Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burnt incense at the pagan shrines on the hills and under every green tree. What are we doing right now? We are turning over to a pagan society, if you will, as in I will worship myself and I will do whatever I want to do and whatever's convenient for me versus there being beauty in marriage, beauty in um, children, beauty in family. There's so much attack on all these levels of marriage and the family I have two two things. A question. Mm-hmm. What is pagan? Pagan means un, not a Christian, so antichrist. So, one of the things you're about to bring up. What if a, a single woman has a baby, 
And that baby came from a choice she may or may have made, but it's just, she's struggling with, I'm pregnant now and I don't know what to do. I'm a single mom. I'm going to be a single mom. What do you do? And that baby did not ask to come. Because that's another big issue that's coming up in our culture is this uh, teenagers even saying, I didn't consent to being born. It's like, no, you didn't. That's not how it works. So get over yourself. But um, God had a plan for him and has a plan for, for him or her that's born that day into a single parent home. How much more so should we as Christians and as a church step up and surround those people with care and love and support? And the reason why I say that is if you look at the stats, the majority, too many of them live in poverty, live in a very horrible um, state of living um, because they can't handle just the pressures of life and the the difficulty of being. So as in, what does that say? God's design is that a child be born into a mother, father, family, um, right? But it's hard to know what to do. What if you find yourself pregnant and everything looks scary in the future? Now, let's take this a step further. A lot of people are going, you know what? This child is coming at an inconvenient time. That's just inconvenient time. (laughs) Yeah. Sounds very selfish, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's like, I haven't gone to college yet. I want to go to college. I haven't started my career yet. I want to start my career. I'm still trying to play a sport and I want to play on my sport. Um, and I remember a, a news article a few months ago or probably six or eight months ago, um, a, an Olympian, so an Olympic athlete went and competed. And after she got done, she goes, ha, ha, I was pregnant the whole time. And she was basically fighting the others who had gone and had an abortion so they could go compete in the Olympics. She actually was saying, hey, I actually did compete and did very well. And by the way, I was pregnant because it doesn't have to be the end of the world. But a lot of this is our worldview. And so you have, so we wrote down a few other things. Um, how do we stop abortion? Um, this is probably almost impossible, but laws against it. But that would also make people hate the government and probably get it illegally, which is why there are rules that make drugs allowed because it just makes a lot of bad things happen. Shootings to get the, get the drugs kind of thing, which is probably a reason Ooh. not to get it, it illegal. You can, that's a lot of stuff you just said there. Yeah. Yes. So we just had the Supreme Court reverse Roe versus Wade, which actually what they really did was just say, hey, each state has to decide now versus a federal, which I think that's appropriate. And it's sad the states are picking sides and many states are picking to be very pro-abortion and almost like fight to be a an abortion destination. What it shows us is back to this first and second chronicles not a Christian nation. We are a pagan nation seeking to do whatever makes me happy. But you and I are have are, are bent that same way too. If I'm not careful, I'm just going to do things to make me happy versus what's smart or wise or biblical for that matter. And so how do we stop abortion? Well, it's actually submitting our lives to Christ and that I want to live for him, not myself. If I find myself pregnant, I... I want to live for that child, not myself. And that's a big one. Yeah. What else do you have? Um, why do we have our beliefs? Ooh, why do we have our beliefs? Where do they come from? <laughs> the Bible. Yeah. And that's the, that's the choice that we've made as parents and we've, influenced you guys and you have to each individually make on your own as to what influences you but that's a big part of for our family what influences us is the bible god's word and if you go back to the verse you read read that again friend psalm um for you created my inmost being you knit me together in my mother's womb oh and there's another one i don't think i read um psalm 139 14 I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Yeah, love those verses. In the beginning, God created Adam and Eve that came together and made babies that built families, that built society. And there's a design to all this. And so what if our family was just ripped apart? 
and you have to live on the street or you have to live with someone else because mom and I can't get along or because of some other circumstance. Here's the thing. I would never be on the streets. I have grandparents. <laughs> You're right. Aunts, you, uncles. <laughs> some don't have that though. Some do not have the people, which is to me where it comes back to the church. Some do not have the family that can. Some reject it. Some reject help from family. And so they do end up in those places. So then the question, which is where this gets into the legal side, is so the government should step in and fix all that. And it's like, not necessarily. The government stepping in and doing stuff is actually causing more trouble than good. Just like if you hand people money, they stop working. They don't, they get lazy. Work is a beautiful thing. It's a good thing. And so you're entering that stage where you've seen your brothers get jobs and work and make money. And you're like, I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah, you're jealous. I want to get a job. And you will. You're 12 and you will, but not yet. So yeah. um, you're relating to work in a very different way than a lot of our adults in our society are relating because they just stay home and. I guess when I think of it, I think of first, I get money so I can get things I want, like candy and books. <laughs> that combination. Um, and also, I guess it just makes me feel more grown up. Yeah, it's true. Some outfits make me feel more grown up, and I like that yeah. because of that. Yeah. It's weird. When you're a kid, you just want to get older, and probably when you're an adult, you just want to get younger. Yes and no. I don't miss being younger at all in those in those ways at all. Hmm. So. I've heard that different yeah. that people do but they do some people do but that's also when when their adult life is just miserable of course they want to go back to a time where either they were just ignorant they didn't know anything or back to a time when there were certain fun things or back to a time where there's no responsibility and i don't want that i, I like like what i get to do who i get to do life with with mom and you know even though we want to wring your neck as, as kiddos sometimes, we love you guys and the adventures we get to have. And that's kind of cool. That's why the verses are important. And there's a lot more we could go into there. But then discussing what you believe. Now, what would you do if if we disagreed? If we didn't agree on the same, on this topic like abortion? The goal is to ask questions and ask questions and ask questions. Then to understand more why they believe what they believe, where it comes from. And then help them unravel some of those beliefs. You don't just, oh, judge. you're right. Yeah, you don't want to judge. But you don't just go, oh, you're right, mom and dad. I'm wrong to a to a teenager or almost teenager. You help them think through um, their belief system. But this is also why, example here, this is important to talk about earlier. And, it, and plant seeds of beliefs about really difficult topics from alcohol to um, work, how you spend your money, um, the Bible, church, um, and then things like abortion, which is really sensitive topics. So, yeah. Thanks for coming and talking about talking this to, with me. Yeah. Yeah. Any other co comments, kind of last, last minute comments about um, this tough one? Something I've thought about, which is um, something that I thought about before. I very much agree with something I've heard in a Tom McDonald song. Oh, gosh. Because the boys listen to it a lot. Yeah. <coughs> bacteria is life on mars but a heartbeat isn't life on earth yeah that's a good statement You're looking for bacteria to prove that there's life and yet when there's a kick or there's a heartbeat you're not going to call that murder <laughs> a heartbeat's a big way that that we believe oh this person isn't dead Ooh, that's another big one or movement so if it's moving it's obviously alive if its heart is pumping blood, then it has to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that on, leave it on that note, because that's such a good one. Good job. Yeah. Yay, Tom McDonald. He's got some pretty wild songs, but we definitely like a lot of what he says and what, how he says it, which is kind of sketchy because I don't, I don't do cuss words, but yeah, some songs yeah. like that are really, really powerful. What was the phrase again that he said? Bacteria is life on Mars, but a heartbeat isn't life on Earth. Yeah. Well, on that note, thanks, Miley, for coming on the podcast. I enjoy these. Yay. Thank you for tuning in to the Family Features Podcast. It's been an honor to serve. If you're struggling and in need, Dr. Gilbert provides a free consultation for new clients. Check out his website at healinglives.com to book a call. If this has been helpful to you, please share it. 
leave a review, and help us get the word out so that we can see lives changed, marriages touched, and more people come into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. For more help and resources, check out Dr. Gilbert's website for books, courses, and more trainings at HealingLives.com. Bless you and your family and all God wants to do in and through you. Remember, your marriage and family are worth fighting for. This is Dr. Corey Gilbert. See you next time.